when you go through frustration, when you go through uh, desperation, uh, what happens? Uh, Sometimes uh, we end up doing compromises. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what I want to talk about as I continue uh, uh, what Jamie said in the youth message, right? One of God's aim is to empower us with victories uh, in our circumstances that we face uh, in our daily life. But many times, Satan brings a situation where he wants us to uh, compromise on God's plan. If that happens, then God fails to empower us with the victories that he was planning for us. Amen. Are you, are you with me? Are you able to understand? Because compromise derails God's plan, right? Sometimes it's very dangerous for a human being like us to compromise. Amen. Amen. The younger generation, especially to fit inside the worldly crowd compromises a lot of things. They do. Sometimes they are willing to sniff, drink, or to experience things that they shouldn't be, amen, shouldn't be doing. Some others get so desperate to get the attention of someone that they they allow them to uh, they allow them the touch the poke the the feel etc and all those stuffs because they they are so desperate to get somebody's attention. Right. Today I would like to urge everyone, especially the younger folks, to be very careful because because we don't know what we do when we are desperate. Amen. When we are in you know, a frustrating circumstances. When we, are, when, we are, when we are compromising, we don't know. In today's society, we are trying to compromise due to our desperate circumstances or due to our frustrations that we go through, right? Because I remember Jamie was saying that when she is doing her clinicals and she is saying that, oh, I just want to be done with it. That's kind of compromise. Then she explained that that is not God's will. God wanted her to go through this, right? Desperation is truly a tool of devil, amen? Because he understands that it is usually in our desperate state that we are willing to compromise on our teachings, on our, on our, on our standards, etc. With that thought, let's move to today's topic, and it is compromise can fail God's empowerment, amen? Let me ask you this question. Uh, if I ask who is your homeboy or who is your best friend or who is your homie? Uh, you might have few or, or at least one name, right? Uh, and if you ask, who is God's homeboy from Bible? In New Testament, Old Testament, the list can go long and you might agree, disagree on few names. There can be arguments and all those stuff, right? I don't know about you, uh, but even though this person gives a tough competition to our brother David, for me, it will be Moses, amen? It has to be Moses, right? The ground opens up in one of the verses. God says, if you are talking about Moses, you are talking about me. When God wanted to speak to Moses, he didn't say, let me send some rain or a wind or let me send a raven. Let's, he said, let's talk face to face. When Jesus was walking on the earth, Pharisees used to argue with Jesus and they uh, they, they used to say, we hear that, what do you say? But the law of Moses said this, this, this. The last chapter of Deuteronomy says, no prophet has risen like Moses in Israel. Amen. So definitely for me, the homeboy of God is Moses. That makes him so, what makes him so special? What makes him so special? Let's turn, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, let's turn to Exodus chapter uh, 8, verse 1. And it says, Exodus, I'll read for you, Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, it says, go to Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Another translation says, let my people go so they can worship me. Amen. Hallelujah. It says they may worship me. We read in chapter 8 that Pharaoh is trying to compromise with these, with, with, with this homeboy, Moses. 
He's trying to compromise with Moses. Today, let me, let me, let me tell you, church, Christian life is not about compromises, but of sacrifice and convictions. Amen. Hallelujah. And what the devil wants us to do is to do, become so accustomed to compromise that in the area, in the area of family, finance, and job, and all other areas, that when it brings us a religious compromise, we become so accustomed to compromises that eventually we'll compromise on our religion and our God because we became so accustomed with compromises in our life. And if we become accustomed to do little bit compromise here, a little bit compromise there and all that, then the word compromise comes into our DNA. Today, I want to talk about four compromises that Pharaoh brings to Moses in this chapter 8, 9, and 10. But before, let's look at, look at, look at once again, verse, eight, verse 1 in chapter 8. Amen? He says, we read in Exodus chapter 8, verse 1, God commands Moses to go to do something. He says, I need you to go and tell Pharaoh that, that let my people go so that they may be able to worship me. Amen. Hallelujah. God is saying, let my people go so that they can worship me. The implication is very clear here that there is something in Egypt that is preventing God's people to worship him. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you, are you, are you able to understand? Are you with me? We understand that Egypt more, when we understand more Egypt, there are many images, ideals in Egypt. Many man-made gods in Egypt, for instance, for everything, there is one God in Egypt. I mean man-made God. Amen? Hallelujah. There is one guy named Emil Durkheim. He's a Jewish French sociologist. In the book named The Elementary Form of Religious Life, he writes like this. He says, while explaining how religious affects the society and vice versa, Durkheim writes, makes this observation while he studies totalism. He says, in this belief system, in this belief system, the fundamental separation of the sacred and the profane is most clear. All the religion, listen, all the religion outgrows this distinction, adding to it myths, images, and tradition, right? In this book, in this book, he's saying that, you know, we are adding all these religions, add myths, images, and tradition to outgrow other religion. In this book, it gives an example of Native American and a study done on them to understand the above statement more clearly, right? Native American, if you look, uh, they used to have different tribes and uh, tribes have different animals that they used to worship as God. The study shows when he studied, the study shows the particular group of Native American, if they are excellent in scouting, they will select eagle as their animal to worship or eagle as their god or image of eagle as the god. If they are good at hunting, they will select lion as their animal to worship or image of lion as to worship. Hope you are following me today this morning. In Hinduism also same, if you are particular, if particular group of people love money, whom they worship, I think it's goddess Lakshmi, if I'm not wrong. If, if they love knowledge or they love to study or they need to have more knowledge, what they do? I think it's goddess Saraswati, right? Uh, so they also, they have separated the gods according to the needs. So whatever people thought will represent them, will be the god they will worship. In this, the study, Durkheim found something interesting. It's not that they are actually worshiping these gods or animals, but they are worshiping themselves because the image is the reflection of who they think they are or who they think they should be or who they think they, 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 have, they want to be, right? These man-made images are representing themselves in some way, that's why they are worshiping them. Are you following? I hope I'm not lost losing you guys with all this uh, heavy words. But I will come to, uh, to my message soon. 
So in Egypt, people were creating their own gods and worshiping them. So basically, the study, this social law is saying that man is deciding what is holy and not, right? In other words, man is setting up the standards, you know? You might say, Robin, you're telling about history, what happened in Egypt, uh, but, but, but that's not happening now and all those stuff. But let me tell you, I, I'm telling this is happening in churches today around the globe and me and you are part of it, amen? The truth be told that if, if you look at churches today, man is setting up the standards and churches are compromising to those standards. Amen. If you ask me about God, I might have a different standard of the same God. Amen. There are some of us who serve God, who think it's okay as long as I'm giving something to church, I'm not putting my 10% to church. Right? There are some who serve a God who thinks it's okay to have a physical relationship with someone who are committed and you will be getting married to have some relationship before that, before you say, I do. Right? To some, there are some who serve the same God who thinks it's okay to tap your feet and move on some, some beats somewhere else on Friday and Saturday nights and on Sunday morning and come and stand and do worship. Amen. There are some who serve a God who thinks it's okay to drink, it's okay to gossip, it's okay to do all those things during weekdays or on Sunday, they can come and do whatever the Bible says to do on, in a setup like this in a church, whether it's a physical church or virtual church. There are some of who serve, who think it's okay to do whatever we can do and love and because God loves us and he will forgive us, amen. So we have one God who we serve with different standards. Same book that we read. One God, one faith, one baptism, but we have different standards of the same God. Isn't our situation exactly like how it was in Egypt in chapter 8? Right? Those standards that we say God has for us are usually our standards adjusted to our lifestyle. We worship ourselves because because this is the image we put of our God. Remember how I explained Native Americans under their own God that they reflect themselves? And this is what is happening in, in Egypt back then and now among us. That's when Moses asked, what should I tell who you are to God? Should I tell them that you are God of rain or should I tell them that you are this God, you are God of money or you are God of prosperity or what, what should I tell them? Because Egypt understands God by their own standards. To that God said, I don't know anything about that, but I am that I am, amen, hallelujah. He's saying, I am that I am. I don't know about how you have standardized your God according to your needs and according to your wish and according to your desire, but I am the God that who is and I am that I am. Amen. Hallelujah. I am the Alpha and the Omega. That's what God introduced uh, himself when Moses asked, what should I tell them when they ask this? We don't ask God to adjust to our lifestyle, but we adjust ourselves to God's lifestyle, right? One place you get all standard is this, is this. One place you get all standard is this. But in Egypt, they made their own standard. They set the rule that that's why God is saying that you cannot worship me here, amen, when we read Chap verse one in chapter eight. That's why God is saying there is something in Egypt and this is what is in Egypt that you cannot worship me here in this land. Amen, hallelujah. The longer you stay in Egypt, the more Egypt gets on you. Amen. Now when Moses goes to Pharaoh, he reads, he, we read first compromise that, that Pharaoh asked Moses to do, amen. And that is in chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 25. And it says, verse 25, chapter 8, verse 25. And it says, and Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, go sacrifice to your God here in the land of Egypt. He says, Pharaoh comes to Moses and says, go and make your sacrifice. I don't have no worship. I don't have no issue. You go and worship your God. That's good. 
but do it in this land. In other words, Pharaoh is saying, go and worship, but you do that worship in Egypt. Amen. Now we know we Pentecostals know how to worship. Nobody can teach us how to worship. We know uh, we don't have any problem in worshiping God. We know the song. We know how to clap the hands. Nobody knows better than us to worship that, right? Pentecostals do it the best. They put the best show when it comes to worshiping God, right? Especially Malayalis and you know South Indian guys and maybe uh, African American, right? We, we can clap, we can dance, and we don't have any problem in worship. But the problem is not with the worship. The problem is, is we are worshiping while we are in Egypt. The problem is we are worshiping, we want to worship while staying in the same place as far Pharaoh is asking Moses to compromise. The problem is that we are worshiping while the Egypt is still in us. That's where the problem is. Well, that's where God has a problem. He's saying, I cannot allow you to worship while the principles of Egypt are still alive in us. Amen. Pharaoh is saying that I want you to worship while you're still in my influence. Don't be surprised if I say that we can worship and can still be under the influence of Satan. This is why church attendance, Sunday school attendance, prayer meeting attendance is not enough because we can be in the place and we can have the world in us. Amen. Are you following? Our problem is not that we are not in church. Our problem is not that we are not in church. We are in church right now. Physically, we are in church. But our problem is that the church is not in us wherever we go in this world. We are not carrying the church in us, worshiping God, but still God Egypt. I'm glad to see you all here. Don't get me wrong, but let me tell you, don't just come because church, church, don't just come to church because, because church gave you some responsibilities that you have to perform. Don't just come to church to avoid pastor calling you during the week and ask him what happened brother, what happened sister. But come to church to worship and allow heaven to fill your heart, hallelujah, and move Egypt from your heart and life forever, amen, amen. And like, Mo I like Moses' reply and he says in verse 26, and he says what he says, he says, and Moses says, it is not suitable or right to do that for the animals that Egypt holds sacred will not permit to be slain by which we are accustomed to sacrifice the Lord our God. If we did this before the eyes of Egyptians, would that not, would they not stone us? Amen. He's saying it is not suitable or right to do that here. He's, he's, when Pharaoh gave him a compromising situation, he said that, hey, why don't you compromise to this? Moses, I like him. And that's why I think he's a favorite of God because he didn't compromise. He's saying it is not suitable or right to do that. See, he is not compromising here. Now listen carefully. Moses says in verse 26 that we just read, he said, what is Egyptians hold sacred and is not permitted to sacrifice is the very animal that we offer to our gods. The place that the world wants you to be on Friday nights and Saturday nights are the very places the church don't want you to be in. Amen. The ring that you want to drink and try to experience other things in your life is the very things that God don't want you to have. Amen. That's what Moses is saying. He's explaining there very clearly. And to us, he's saying that things that are important to this world is not important to my God. Amen. Hallelujah. Moses is saying that we are too different. To follow our God all the way, it is, it is, it is there in a worldly environment on the weekdays, and it's not possible that we can come on, on a Sunday and just worship and just go back. Moses is saying, we cannot do that because we are too different. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Church, let me tell you this, the way we live is different. You are made, you are not made to compromise on situations and fit into this world. Amen. Where Pharaoh is saying, hey, dude, you can worship your God. You have, we have no issues. Stay here, stay, stay, stay here and dial into that Zoom meeting. And you can say, you can worship, you can attend everything. You can also testify. You can also give messages and all those stuff. You, 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 you have to say no because the surrounding that you are in will not allow you to worship truly our God. Amen. Are you following? Amen. You are made different. Amen. Let me tell you, church, BCA, you are made different. Whoever is hearing me today, I want to tell you are made differently. You are not made to compromise any of the things. No matter what frustration comes in, no matter what situation comes in, no matter what circumstances you are brought in. But let me tell you, do not compromise because God's plan is for you to worship God in somewhere else. Amen. Hallelujah. God's plan is to prosper you. God's plan is to worship you. God's plan is for you is to worship him in spirit and truth. And while you are here, where you are right now, you cannot worship God. Church, do not compromise to fit into the society. Do not, do not, do not compromise and do not change your lifestyle to fit into the society, but let be unique. Amen. Hallelujah. Do not, do not be somewhere else during the weekdays and come to church to just compromise because your parents will ask you, because your pastors will ask you. Let me tell you, people might think that you're crazy, but you can say, yes, I am crazy for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Israel reached a place where they had to cut off few folks from their friend list. They had to cut off few folks from their contact list because they realized that they cannot, cannot worship when they are still in contact with these people. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's move. Second compromise. In verse 828, Pharaoh says, in verse 828, Pharaoh says, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you should not go very far away. Amen. Now, second compromise Pharaoh is bringing to Moses. He's saying, oh, I have no issues. Go, sacrifice, worship. He is saying, go far, but don't go too far. I want to have an eye on you. Amen. Hallelujah. Example, when you have toddlers and babies and all those things, when they just started walking, when they just started crawl, crawling and, and they are playing, what do you do? You just keep an eye and you let them go, but you never let them go too far, amen, hallelujah. As, they, as soon as they reach out of your side or your hand, what do you do? You reel them back in, amen. And for, Pharaoh is saying the same thing. Go far, but don't go too far. So I can easily reel you back in. Amen. Hallelujah. Devil is saying to us, I want you to go far in Christ. Do I have no issues if you're going to church and all those stuff attending and doing all those things that church thing does. But don't go too far. He's saying, oh, go to church. Don't listen to sermons. But that's fine if you listen to sermon. Do, I have no issues. Don't respond to him. Don't respond to those sermons. He's saying, even though you respond to sermons, I have no issues, don't get baptized. Even though you get baptized, don't allow, don't allow God to change your life, amen? Don't go that far, amen? Hallelujah. He's saying, I have no issues with all these things unless God allows you to change your life, amen? Hallelujah. He's saying, don't change your life. Don't go too far. Today, church, Christ is not looking at churches who are ready to compromise, but he is looking at churches. He is looking at people who are sold out for him. He is not looking at people who 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 do who, who wants to go halfway and 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 want to commit God in a halfway agreement. But he is looking for somebody who can give his whole life to Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to go far because Jesus didn't look. Jesus is not looking for some part-time relationship. He is not looking for a part-time uh, relationship with us, but he is looking for a full-time relationship with us. Amen. Hallelujah. For who? 
for, for, for all you have gone so far and not gone so far enough, I urge, I request Holy Spirit is saying, today you want to be sold out for Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he is ready to invest full time in your life, in your circumstances, in your future. And that's why when we, we are not ready for that commitment, we are not ready for that relationship and be compromised. That's why we fall again and again to the addiction, to the habits that we have. And that's why the Egypt comes back to us because we have not gone too far. Egypt is still there somewhere in our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you following? Amen. When, when, when we go fishing, I'm not sure how many of you have gone for fishing. Uh, when we used to go back in Florida, when especially in, when you are fishing in a sea, you, you put your bait and when you, your bait get a bite, what do you do? You allow the fish to swim a little bit. And when you know this is the right time, what do you do? You stop and reel back in. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. Because you want the hook to be really firm there when the fish is taking the bite but you will never allow the fish to go too far and that's what devil is trying to to do with us as church amen he that's what pharaoh was trying to do with moses and israelites and that's what devil is trying to do today let me move to the third compromise as my time is running out and it is in uh, uh chapter 10 was verse, verse 8 and it says it says, you can, you can, you can go. You can go. And it says that you can go, but let your children be here. Amen. Hallelujah. He's asking, who is with you? He's asking, who is with you? He said, oh, we all will go with our, and Moses replies, we all will go with our young one, with our old one, with everyone, with everything that with our sons and daughters, with everything that we are, we are going with this. But Pharaoh says, let the little ones stay here. Amen. Hallelujah. Pharaoh understood the importance of, the, of, of children in this dynamics called church and future of the church. He said, let the little one be here. Pharaoh is trying to stop the little one from hearing the stories and uh, stopping the little one from hearing those, 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 those exhortations. They are stopping the little ones from hearing those testimonies. Amen. Hallelujah. What for a thought? He thought that Moses will be very selfish that to try uh, to try to get some something over not. He will forget the little ones. Amen. He was hoping, Pharaoh was hoping that he would be so excited to get the seed in the church that he will forget the children in the hallway and the foyer of the church. They are in the building, but they are not in the, in the right place. Amen. Hallelujah. They are somewhere in the hallway and the foyer and roaming around the foyers of the church building because Pharaoh was so excited to get into the church and get that seat. Amen. Hallelujah. He thought that they will, they will, they will, they will, they will be so caught. Moses will be so caught in putting up food on the table for the other people to provide the best car, to provide the best house, to provide the best education, to put the bread and forget to put the bread of life in the hearts of their children. He thought Moses will forget that. He thought Moses will be, will be so caught in attending the prayer meetings that he will forget to call the little ones who are watching TVs and are engaged in other activities when they are, when they are going to church to attend these meetings or when they are logging in to uh, virtual platforms to attend these meetings. But you know, to my surprise, to our surprise, Moses said, no, I'm not compromising. I'm not leaving them behind. I'm taking them with me because Moses knew that one of these little ones will be Joshua who will enter the promised land. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why the generation who will go over, that's the generation that will, will go over to the promised land. Moses knew it. And Moses knew it because of his connection with God. He said that I'm not leaving the little ones here because 
because they are the one who will be entering the promised land. They are the one who will be bringing the uh, revival in the city of Massachusetts, in the city of Boston, in the state of Massachusetts. They will do. They will be the one who will bring a revival in our church. Amen. Hallelujah. They will be the one who will be leading worship in BCA in coming days and coming years. They are the one who will be giving these messages in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Converting a lot of people to God. Amen. Check on your kids. Do not compromise on parenting. Amen. Hallelujah. First to compromise were, were, were based on were based on kids. The second compromise is based on parenting. Do not compromise on parenting. Amen. Hallelujah. The next compromise we see is in, is in verse 24, chapter 10, where Pharaoh summoned Moses and he says, he says, can 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 you leave your flocks here? Can you leave your belonging here? Amen. Hallelujah. And he says, take everyone, but leave your belongings here. Moses says, our livestock will also go with us. Nothing will leave. We are not leaving a penny. We are not leaving one small piece of cloth here. We are taking all our belonging. Amen. Hallelujah. If you read, he will give the reason. He's saying, we don't know what will God ask. What will God ask in future? When we go there, God might ask this to sacrifice. And what will happen? We don't have that. Then we have to come back to Egypt to take that. So we don't want to take the chance. We want to take everything with us. Amen. Hallelujah. He's saying to us, don't leave anything. Amen. Hallelujah. When you come to the house of God, when you come, when you give your life to God, don't leave anything back. Amen. Hallelujah. Take the whole belonging. Let everything that, that belongs to you get converted to God and his salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. He's saying, I can't leave anything behind because there will be something that, that God may ask me to do. If I leave them behind, how will I do that? Amen. Hallelujah. I will close here saying this. I will close here but proving this last point. When you compromise with devil, no matter in what area, we think it's okay to do little here and little there. But let me tell you, when you compromise, Anything that you compromise, devil, 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 devil will take something from you, amen, that God wanted to use in you, amen, to serve him. It might be your talent of singing, amen, hallelujah. It might be your talent of playing some instrument, hallelujah. When you compromise, it might be the talent of proclaiming his word to this congregation. Let me tell you, when you compromise, devil will take away those things from your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. To be honest, all of us have compromised in some way in our life. Amen. Hallelujah. We have, we have, we have given back few things, few of our belongings to devil in, in, in those compromises that God would have used. But let me tell you, in the end, amen, everything works for good because God is gracious to redirect. Let me give you an example of GPS. We have all used GPS. It's there in our car, in our mobile, in our cell phones, everything is there. When you put an address there, it will take you to the address, amen, your destination, amen. Sometimes it misses those exits in our life. And then we, we say, oh, what happened? Oh, we missed that. We had to take the uh, route 16, route nine. We had to take, we missed that. But what happens in GPS after some time, it says a word, it says rerouting, amen. Recalculating, it says rerouting, recalculating. And it does some magic and it brings you back to a new route that will take to your route that you missed, amen, hallelujah. So that you can reach your destination clearly safely and timely manner. Amen. Hallelujah. God is there to empower us with some victories that we might have we might have missed because we have compromised. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, God is giving you an opportunity to reroute. Amen. Hallelujah. He is giving an opportunity to recalculate those roots and he is giving an opportunity to come back so that we can have those victories, the empowerments in our life that we have, we have lost due to compromises. The word that came to Moses was, let me, let me, let me take the people, let me take the people so that they can worship. If Moses would have compromised on this, didn't leave Egypt or left his children there or left his belongings there or, 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 or left anything that belongs to him there, God's plan of promised land 
will never come true. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he never compromised in any of those situations that was provided by Pharaoh. Amen. God's plan of promised land came to a reality. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you and a purpose for you, amen. He wants to empower you with victories on your current circumstances. So do not compromise because his plans are made for your success, amen, hallelujah. His plans are made for your success and he is not allowing you to compromise and you do not compromise on the, on the, on the strategies the devil will bring to you. But hold on to God and his plan and he will empower you to those victories that are due for you. Amen. Hallelujah. May God bless you with these words. Thank you. Amen.